So, uh, moving not, on. Not, not going not going to Pitt. I've lost so much respect for game day. It's a show I used to love, and and like many other ESPN products, it it's focusing on the wrong things. Yes, yes, I, I tend to agree. Tend to agree. Uh, you bring up Pitt. Let's go ahead and jump into Pitt twenty seven, Clemson seventeen. Pitt's post game win expectancy. 99%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. There was this never a, a laugh. DJ got benched. Like, what in the world? Uh, who yep. would have ever assumed that? And it's not like the other guy was any better. I mean, it's you can't do anything with that offensive line. That offensive line is terrible. Uh, on top of that, like, and so I had people asking me on Twitter yesterday, like in the DMs, asking at what point is this on the coaching staff and not just oh, it's a bad season. Like, a I, lot. It's been on the coaching staff the whole time. Like the whole I, time. Tony Elliott was great so long People as Jeff Scott was there. People still throwing his name out for big time coaching jobs. You do realize that, right? Yeah, but I, like I, I, I have, told you, I have heard. I have heard. Now these are all national guys. There's no local guys that actually cover the sport. National guys have thrown his name out for the LSU job, and I think you are insane <laughs> if you think that guy's going to get a big time Power Five job. That's that's not going to happen. He is not getting the LSU job. He's not no, getting no, USC. Not just the LSU not, job. He wouldn't get the Missouri job if it opened right now. No. He wouldn't get Minnesota if it opened right now. At, I told you when Jeff Scott left for South Florida that I thought that Jeff Scott was the brains behind the operation at Clemson and that I thought Tony Elliott might be able to hang on for a little bit, but I did not believe that Tony Elliott was the guy, and it is proving to be fruitful. It, it like. <laughs> It, it, this is not a, I told you so, this is, they have got to find somebody that understands how to run that offense because it ran the same from as soon as they hired Chad Morris all the way through everybody else. Like, and and you're not going to be able to do the same thing at Clemson that you've been doing for, for 10 years, like keeping Gary, the same staff, et cetera. CEOs don't matter in college football today. Architects of offenses are the most imp- the single most important person on a college football team is the architect of the offense. That's it. It's not the quarterback because that person gets the quarterback. It and that's persons who the quarterbacks go to play for. All right. It's it's not the head coach if the head coach is not the architect. I don't care. Give me all the numbers you want about Nick Saban. If he ever makes a bad hire as an OC and doesn't have great players, he will not win. All right. True. The CEO. So Dabo, you, you use brains. You, you, we will never use brains and Dabo in the same conversation. He is he he does not make that <laughs> offense any better. He does not make any play calls that actually helps this team win football games ever. And and he is a CEO. And when he has a great OC. They are outstanding, and when he doesn't, they don't, which is why I'm very sorry to say, but most of you CEO coaches need to be careful because OCs are going to take your jobs, and I think they should. This is a guy – you're talking to a guy that my entire life, all I've ever loved or cared about was defense because when I played football for the very short, limited amount of time, I played defense, I understand defense, and I like the defensive side of the ball. The game has changed far too much. Well, All the, the rules have changed. On offense. That's, that's the biggest part. The rules have changed. Is right? that part of the game? That's. A, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's okay, a, that's what I'm saying. I just said that. I know, it. I know, but I, that that's the biggest change. That's what I'm saying. It's like I'm agreeing with you, but the rules have completely changed so that defense doesn't matter. Like it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter as much anymore. So Not yeah, as with, much. Uh, you got to get a stop here or there, and that's fine. But. When your head football coach is not the play caller and the designer of the of the offense, it's just really hard because when you have a great one, he's going to get hired away by somebody to be their head coach. And then you got to hope you make a better hire. And then you got to hope you just keep making good hires. And that's what Clemson did here. And we're going to talk Pitt for just a minute because obviously they are the team that's playing well. They With Clemson, they thought that they could just continue – to move guys up the chain, right? Yep. And and that was the deal with Tony Elliott. He'll be the next guy because he was the the co offensive coordinator with Jeff Scott. But Scott was uh, was the play caller. He was the one that handled all the business. And and Tony Elliott looks real good when he's got Trevor Lawrence and when he's got you know a, a decent enough offensive line. And this offensive line is uh, rough. Josh comes in. He said, "Good morning, folks. Good morning, Josh, and everybody else that's watching." Let's see. Ball Python Love said, "Could I have you either or both of you as a special guest on my channel sometimes?" Hey, you know what? Absolutely. Just hit us up in the DMs. We will certainly uh, discuss that. So, Kenny Pickett in this game, 
25 out of 39, 302 yards, two touchdowns, zero picks, and and Pitt was able to run the football. I mean, just ridiculous. So this was, uh, you know, they ran 82 plays to 62 plays, and if you look at, like, the, the basic point of this, Pitt was over 50% on third downs. Clemson was 36%. Pitt was able to drive the ball more yards per play, et cetera. I mean, everything was Pitt's way, and it still kind of came down to the interception on the shovel pass that got everybody the cover if you took Pitt. At the shovel pass, there are moments when DJ Uyangalele, it looks like he has no idea what he's doing. on it. Like, he gets so nervous. I feel like there is so much stress on him that he doesn't know what to do. And Kenny Pickett is just as cool as a cucumber, brother. Like he, did you see his comments after the ball game? No. Like they they ask him, you know, how are you going to celebrate a win over Clemson? He said, "I'm probably going to go back and have a cold one and get ready for Miami." <laughs> Here, here's the problem, Gary. You you talk about these things with with DJ. Isn't that coaching? Being prepared, being ready mentally for for different scenarios. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. But also, it's it's. So I think it was more so coaching at the beginning of the season. Right now, I think he personally is in his own like he's in his own head so much that he can't do the simple things correctly. Right? I don't know that he's been able to read a defense all season, but also like he's not accurate with the football, well, and no. and the offensive line gives him zero time. He's got happy feet all the time. I. I mean, I have no, no expectation for them for the rest of this season. They got three oh. losses, and we're not even to Halloween yet. I mean, it's, it's not uh, a good football team. Ske- look at that schedule, because I just did. That that This ain't the last loss they're going to have. Which is crazy to think about, because before the season, we talked about how easy that schedule was. All right, and, I'm, 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 about to run, I'm about to run it down real quick. Okay. Florida State, Louisville, UConn, Wake Forest, South Carolina. How many of those games they win? Right now, make a call. I think they could possibly lose two of them. So that's five games left. I think they could win. They could win four. I think they could. They more likely they could, they'll win. I also three. think they could lose. I also think they could lose three of them. I, th- I think they could lose three of them. Uh, but I'll, I'll say they'll win one of those. That's that looks like a toss up at this point. Florida that's State's right. looking a lot better right now. Yeah, I was just about to say that Florida State game against them. That's a coin flip right now. Wake Forest undefeated. That's, that's 100% Wake. a coin flip. Uh, Wake Forest going to beat the shit out of them. It ain't going to be close either. <laughs> Do you see the stat? That's the most impressive stat line of the weekend, by the way. It might be the most impressive stat oh, line of the year. We're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> I love doing this show with you so much. <laughs> like <laughs> They're going to beat the shit out of them. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.